All these photos right here were taken with the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. Now let me tell you more about the lens and the photos. Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben and this is the Canon SL3 and Canon 50 millimeter F 1.8 lens. This is my favorite lens for photography because I made my first thousand dollars as a professional with this lens, but the Nikon version. Now I have a Canon camera and I want to test it out to see how good it is. So I got this lens from lensrentals.com. They sent it to me, which was very nice of them, and I got you 15% off. So if you do wanna try any glass, cameras, lighting, you can get it there with the link down below. But I'm gonna tell you about this lens physically, I'm gonna tell you about the pricing, and tell you which cameras you can use it on, and of course, show you some example images like the ones you're seeing here. First, let's talk about the lens physically. It is very small. As you can see, the lens itself is tiny, so that's really nice. That means it's lightweight. You can keep it in your bag or you can walk around with it on your camera, and you basically won't notice that you're carrying it, which is really nice. It has an autofocus motor built in and it has this switch on the side. So you can hear that little switch click and it focuses fairly quickly. So as you can see, the lens is extending. It protrudes a little bit out of the body, but it does focus very quickly and it doesn't even get that much bigger depending on where it is in the focal range. So you can see it's still very, very small and compact. It has a 49 millimeter filter thread. So if you want a polarizer or a UV filter, they're gonna be fairly cheap. And the lens overall is a fantastic value because you can use it on any Canon camera. So if you have a crop sensor camera like an SL3, a Canon 90D, a T6i or T7i, et cetera, you can use this lens. And if you ever move up to a full frame like a Canon 6D or a 5D camera, you can use this as well on those sensors. So it autofocuses quickly, it's small, it's lightweight, it's fairly inexpensive. Now let's look at the images. Here are some photos I took in downtown Santa Monica around the Third Street Promenade of my friend Grace. And these are edited images. They were shot raw, edited in Capture One, but you can do the same edits in Lightroom. And now let's take a look at these files. I'll show you the metadata and the before and after. Here you can see this image was at 1 800th of a second at f1.8. And I wanna show you this image looks beautiful, but one issue I had is I missed focus quite a bit, not because of the lens, but because of the camera. So there aren't a ton of focus points on the Canon SL3, which is their cheapest DSLR. So you can see this image is actually blurry, but to show you the sharpness, this next shot that I got was beautiful and super crisp on the eyes. So keep in mind, you'll probably be shooting with a newer, better camera with better autofocus, which means you'll get more shots in focus. So that was my biggest issue, getting shots in focus, but when they are sharp, they look fantastic. Here's a before of this image, it's a little brighter and a little more dull. Here's an after. What I did was I moved the exposure. So as you can see, we went down 0.47. I did a custom white balance, and then I also changed my red. So you can see that before, it looked like this, and then I just brought up the saturation of the red. You can see that's adjusting her jacket, her lips, and also the chair. So there you go. Now, where the 50 millimeter 1.8 shines is because it lets in so much light thanks to that large aperture that you will never be able to get with an 18 to 55 millimeter lens or even an f2.8 lens. You can shoot in low light situations, still at low ISO, and get this beautiful background and beautiful sharp images. Now you can see right here, the eyes look fantastic, super sharp. You can see the reflection of the light that was hitting Grace's eyes here. And this lens looks awesome. Now, if we look at the before of this image, you can see it was quite a bit darker. I brought up the exposure and I brought down the highlights and I did a little bit of editing on the eyes. So if we take a look here, this is my eyes adjustment layer. I just made them a little bit brighter and also used the dehaze function to give them a little bit more clarity. We can look with a slightly different outfit. Same thing here, 1 1 60th of a second, f1.8, and the images are absolutely beautiful. Make sure to shoot in RAW and utilize that 1.8 aperture. Now, when we move to the outdoors, you can see, again, super sharp, crisp photos. We have a lot of detail on the eyelashes and on the eyes themselves, the teeth, the lips. You can see a lot of texture in the skin tone as well, and we have a nice blurred out background. A little tip for you is when you're shooting your image, try and coordinate colors a little bit. Think about your image before you take it. What I did for this is we saw this wall. There was also an H&M store and we went, we bought this outfit, we took photos in it and then we returned it. Make sure to keep the clothes clean, keep the tags on them. And uh, you know, you can do that sometimes. Here's the same setting, just different background. We moved slightly and you can see again, super sharp on the eyes beautiful, softly blown out background. This doesn't look like portrait mode on your phone. This looks like, you know, a natural physics created, beautiful bokeh-licious background. And that's because it's actually the lens doing the magic. And you can see we have a really nice blur here of this entire sort of alleyway. Now the last image I'll show you, and first I'll show you the before and after, just a little bit of exposure adjustments here. This last image, slight exposure adjustment as well. And you can see same thing, we got a full body photo 
really nice. We have a lot of colors going on. We have some emotion going on as well. We even have a little too much detail in the slime up, but we could Photoshop that out or shoot a burst so that we have a couple frames without it. We could clean up the ground and have a really nice image. So overall, if you're thinking about getting this lens, hopefully these images showed you that this is a fantastic lens and your camera body does not matter very much, if at all, when you're shooting with the right glass and you have a good setting. Yes, I had a fantastic model. Yes, we put a little bit of effort into the outfits, but this is just something that happens the more and more you shoot. Even this first image, which I showed you, had the blurry eyes going on, still looks good. So if you were to post this, no one would really notice. Would I print it? No, but this lens is super sharp. Let's take a look here. Nice and easy. We have sharp focus there, sharp focus there, very sharp there, super sharp right here, and again, sharp there. So. This is an amazing lens to shoot with. If you've been thinking about getting a 1.8, at least rent it, if not buy it. I have links to both options down below, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.